I don't believe in talent. I believe in soft skills that you may not know you even have. The problem is, is that you might really want to be good at good video games and you can, you just need to understand that you're starting from here and some people are starting from here. Uh, I watched your Mamba Mindset video, and one thing is in mind. How much do you think someone's mental performance in an activity video game is hardwired in their nature? I say this because I noticed that some players cross me different games hundreds of thousands of hours and never really get anywhere. I often watch dozens of guides, follow the principles as close as possible. It just doesn't click for me. I also notice that really good players can always explain what the good game. They just say practice, yet thousands of people practice for just long, get nowhere near as close. I think one of the things is I'll, I'll point out, this is a really, really, really good question. A lot of people, it's not just how much you practice, it's how you practice. A lot of people play the game and because they just, and they really want to win or they really want to get better or they really want to rank up, they will improve um, through that. But I'm actually going to talk about something. This has been a video idea that's been on my mind for quite a long time. And I've actually, this is a good springboard for it. So the way to look at it is like you have an RPG rollout, right? Where you you choose the, the class that has more stamina or more health or more spirit or more energy or more strength or whatever. And you start the game out with like your various bars, you know, and, and, and you find out like, you know, what's my IRL RPG rollout, right? And, or my RPG role. And then from there is you spend time in the game developing different aspects and making choices that either complement your staring through style or, or increase it in different ways and shapes and forms. But the reality of the situation is that you might be operating at a disadvantage in certain situations and you might be operating at an advantage in certain situations. It doesn't mean that you can't, if you start in a character with an RPG that starts really low in strength, that you can't increase that strength. You can, it just means that you're going to have to take some extra time that you might need to approach the situation a little bit differently. What I've noticed with working with thousands and thousands of people is that through nurture, um, I, I would say nature versus nurture. It's, I think it's mostly nurture. Uh, I think everybody, it, nurture is overwhelmingly more the thing where you start off as a child, an infant, a toddler, a teenager, and so on. And your entire life experience creates an RPG rollout for you. All right. To use gamer terms. All right. Now, before you cringe, I'm telling you, this is true. And different people have different advantages and disadvantages, not because just, oh, that's my nature, but because this is what I've been doing since I was a child. From my school experiences, my family life, various experiences have led me to be more competitive mindset, to be less competitive mindset, to be have an easier time focus, to be better under pressure, to be worse under pressure. When you play into Overwatch, not only do you have a propensity, different people for learning different skill sets easier, Maybe you're more attuned to learning a character that's more game sense related or more mechanical related, or you have more satisfaction about the mechanical propensities or not. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're good at all of them. Maybe you're just not that good at games. You ever you know that? Like, oh, I'm just not that good at games. You ever ask yourself why? Why are you not that good at games? I'm not just that good at video games. Is it you just never really enjoyed them playing much as a kid? So you don't have like the problem solving mindset when it comes to video games? Do you just not care as much? Is your reaction speed just physiologically a tiny bit slower? Do you not enjoy applying yourself to puzzles? And if you do enjoy applying yourself to puzzles, why? And for me, I can literally track. Uh, I grew up in a very sports oriented household because my dad got us into sports from a very young age. And my dad always emphasized hard work and almost never complimented my physical attributes. Like he never said, wow, you're fast or you hit really hard or you know, you, you, you throw the ball really accurately. He always complimented my work ethic. That he always put an emphasis on work ethic and working hard and being smart. And so I spent my entire life as a kid, you know, always putting a lot of emphasis on being a hard worker and thinking. And it's kind of funny because I was actually a, always a really fast kid, but my dad never complimented my speed, never, not once. I put a lot of emphasis on those things. And so what they do now is that affected my Overwatch growth where I never really, like I worked hard at my mechanics, but I, I always, always like I always internally per prioritized thinking problems through. And because I grew up in a big sports household and, you know, I, I was very not easy, but I had an easier time applying myself to video games because I was already in that competitive headspace and I was used to competing. And so when I think about what are the skills that I developed growing up, my IRL RPG rollout of my childhood, I'm more competitive and more problem solving mindset than the average person. And many people that are, do well in video games are probably gonna fall into that category. Or they're gonna have some sort of scenario in their life that pushed them there. And you might not have that IRL RPG role. The problem is, is that you might really want to be good at good video games. And you can, you just need to understand that you're starting from here. 
and some people are starting from here. I don't believe in talent. I believe in soft skills that you may not know you even have. The only talent that I know that scientifically is proven is you wake up and you're a tall baby. <laughs> okay? Or you had got slightly thicker bones. You know, you, there's certain physiological things that we're just born with and that's how it goes. Uh, maybe talent is being fortunate and uh, fortunate enough to be born into a family that cares for you. And so that, that in general will make your IRL RPG rollout a little bit better. Let's not pretend that some form of privilege pays a hand into that. But again, at the same time, just because your RPG rollout puts you at a disadvantage does not mean that you are incapable of closing that gap. In fact, I've known many people who have done that. I could argue that in many ways I was at a disadvantage because when I went into Overwatch, I had never played a first-person shooter before. In fact, I'd only played MMO, and that's it. And so I did, had no concept of map control, space control. I, I was not good with aiming. I was playing on a laptop. I was at a massive operational disadvantage beyond uh, just the competitive side of things. And so I had to work extra hard at my mechanics because I didn't have any mechanics at all. The good news, guys, the good, the bad news is this. The bad news is this, is that first off, I do think that living in a loving and caring household uh, and with people that push you to learn and do things that you enjoy, that gives you an automatic buff to your IRL RPG rollout across the board. You might still be bad at video games, but you probably have longer arrows than the average person. People that waste a lot of time, this is gonna hurt, but people that waste time consuming content, uh, whether it's social media, people that don't spend time with friends and family, people that don't read books, people that don't get enough sleep are shortening or stunting the growth of their arrows. Because the other thing is that there are objectively useless things to do, which hurts, but it's true. So what are you doing with your time? Now, I'm not saying that you have to be productive all the time. In fact, playtime, I, I just recently learned recently that one of the most important things for stress management, which improves the quality of work and focus, is play. Just chilling. But how much of that time is, is spent in an active negative thing like, like social media and so on? So um, I think here's the, here's, the, here's the good news, is that even if you're not good at video games or you are rolling out in an IRL RPG rollout disadvantage, you can close that gap even if you do operate at a disadvantage, first off, there's nothing stopping you from closing that distance. Um, th there's lots of things that will slow you down and make it more difficult, but it, it is possible. And more importantly, a lot of people get really tunneled on one aspect of their play. I know people that are really, truly just awful at video games, and they're wonderful people. Not just because they're sweet and kind, they're legitimately very talented people. I mean, how many of you guys know that people that are legitimately really bad at fill in the blank, but really good at fill in the blank, you know? So maybe you suck at video games, Albatross, but there's probably other things that you're really good at that I'm not even close to being as talented as you are. You notice how I use the word talented? That's a joke, right? So what, what, where did, were your hours spent as a child or in the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years that mine weren't, that gave you an advantage in some other way, sh shape and form? And that's just something you have to consider. The hard part is when you find something that you enjoy, and you're like, man, I wish I'd spent more time as a kid developing this. And I think that that definitely gives you a dis like that's something that you might have to overcome, but it also gives you a unique perspective. I think that's something that people don't really realize is I is like, because I didn't want, think about it this way, because so many of these Overwatch coaches that jumped into the scene had so much experience with first person shooters and so many connections and had been playing the game way longer than I had. I mean, I literally started two years too late, really. But because I had experience with mixed martial arts, and coaching and athletics and things like that. What happened is they started here and went like this, right? Whereas my coaching career started somewhere down here and went like this. And I know that's not exactly the example that you're looking for here, but maybe your, your learning is nonlinear. Maybe it's about finding the way that you're approaching the game uh, and something will click. The opportunity will present itself. You'll figure it out. And then because you have all these other things that uh, in your back of your uh, talent box, you'll pop off. Or maybe you'll go, you know what, maybe just over video games taking it super, super seriously isn't for me. And I'm gonna, you know, I don't enjoy that process of flying myself and grinding it as much and I'm gonna move on, right? I mean, if you look at really anybody who's ever been the best at anything, you can almost always track some sort of soft skills that they developed along the way that allow them to succeed. Not even necessarily that they've been doing it since they were four years old, they might not have been. You know, Van Gogh, or I don't think Van Gogh, I don't think he was painting until he was like 30 or 40. I think he was pretty old when he started painting. 
So again, whenever I talk about these IRL RPG rules, my encur I encourage you guys to apply yourself to something, even if you're not sure exactly where it's gonna go. Because you'd be shocked at the number of soft, the, the value of soft skills, and not just the soft skills themselves, but this hard skill of applying yourself.